example, I'm going to discuss the two-point perspective. In particular, we're going to focus on the overhang and the pitch of a roof, as the example shows here. So it's a very simple example, but what we have is the layout with our picture plane, with the horizontal line and the ground line, and then we have our main anchor line. We've got, gotten a front view on our ground line, and then we have our top view that has got a anchor point here on the picture plane. So what we want to do is we want to start by looking at the angle of our tower here that is a slant of 30 degrees to the left and we have a slant of 60 degrees on the right for the tower and uh, obviously this is now the edge of the roof and then the hidden detail that is presented here is now the external wall uh, that are, uh, is visible um, from the top view and that's why we just made it hidden detail. So what we want to start with is to now draw parallel from our starting point with the slant of the roof here, that angle of 30 degrees from the starting point at the bottom, all the way to our picture plane at the top here. And we will also go and draw parallel to the slant of 60 degrees here on the right hand side of our tower and roof from this starting point, a line that goes 60 degrees all the way to the picture plane. Once we've gotten that, we are going to draw a vertical construction line straight out that is going to rest on our horizon line. And then we will do the same for the left vanishing point. So from the picture plane, we project the line straight down to the horizon line. So I've just used the waterline marks just to give me those lines. So I'm going to use now a light construction line and it's going to show us these constructions so what i want to do is start here from the starting point project it all the way on the water line to the picture plane from the picture plane vertically straight down to the horizon and then also from the starting point to our picture plane on the right and then from the picture plane straight down vertically to the horizon line and this construction here is to determine the vanishing points uh, of our two-point perspective drawings. On the left, we'll have our left vanishing point. On the right, our right vanishing point. So I'm going to go edit, clear all constructions so that we just see this. So this is phase one of the perspective. I teach the students that you draw uh, this drawing in two phases. The first one is just the setting up of determining your left and right vanishing point and the second phase is where we actually answer the isometric drawing. So uh, one more thing that I would like to add to this phase is now where our main anchor line intersects here with our ground line and from there we're also going to take now the base of our tower which is going to be our um, lowest point of the tower and we want to project that now to the left vanishing point and we want to take that from there to the right vanishing point. Okay, now any good draftsman will at this stage at least have labeled their vanishing point. So I'm going to place a reference point there and a reference point here. I'm going to grab one of these labels and copy it and just say that this now is our LVP for our left vanishing point, we're going to copy or move that just first into proper positioning and then we say copy paste, we'll move that all the way to the right hand side and we're going to label it here, we're going to say that's now the RVP, that must be capital letters and our RVP then indicates that's our right vanishing point. Good, so that's the first phase of our construction. Now the second phase is to now actually determine uh, the points. Now here you can decide whether or not you want to actually draw uh, the base of your tower um, first or if you want to do or attempt the roof first. Now I like to do the roof first, once I that's sorted then the uh, walls of my tower uh, is a bit easier for me to determine so but it doesn't matter whichever is your pr preference okay now determining the roof there are several ways we can go about it but first we need the height we need to know and realize that the 
roof is going to start at a certain height so that's why I'm going to use my front view here and I'm going to project that height now all the way to my main anchor line because we want to get the height here and the height there and those two corners connect here on my picture plane and that is why I can project the height to that angle line because these two lines are then intersecting or um, connecting to one another on the picture plane and that is why that anchor line is useful for the height of the base of my roof. So once I have that height on the a main anchor line, I'm going to go and take that reference point and project it all the way to the left vanishing point. And please make sure that you do take it to the left vanishing point and not to that connection there at the top. That's why we determined the left vanishing point. All of our references must disappear to the vanishing points. So that same height will also go to the right vanishing point. So we need to make sure we go and draw it all the way to the right vanishing point. So that will give me the base of my roof to the right and the base of my roof to the left at that height as I have projected it. So now what I need to do is to understand how far is that roof going to project to the left and how far is it going to project to the right or disappear in other terms and before the roof actually is cut off. So to do that I need to go to my top view and go to the furthest point on the left of my top view, that point needs to be projected all the way down to my stand point. Now my stand point is the point that will determine the depth perspective or perception of my vanishing uh, points. Or not the vanishing points, but the depth perspective of the a roof's disappearance into the vicinity of the left and right vanishing point. So that's why we want to um, project it all the way to the standpoint. Uh, the standpoint can be moved around. So whenever the standpoint moves around, it means that the depth perspective of that corner and that corner is also going to be adjusted uh, as well as that of the tip of our roof. So so what we did is we just took that line all the way to the SP, but now for the sake of clarity on my drawing, I don't need to show that line going all the way. I just need to show it all the way to the picture plane. As long as if I were to continue it, it will perfectly meet up with the standpoint. Now once I've done that, I can now go and connect that projection and draw it straight down so that it actually intersects with the base of my drawing for the lowest point, which is not really necessary. I just like to do that. But what you really want is that point. So many people just start uh, stop their projection there, but uh, that's up to you. Now what happens is that you want to take on the right-hand side the vanishing point or the uh, corner of your roof that goes to the stand point to determine the depth perspective of that point. And what I'm going to do is also just now erase that line. I have the angle that's correct and I'm going to stop it at picture plane. And once I have the picture plane, I'm going to take that point and project it vertically straight down again, either to the base line or to the line at the base of my roof. So let's just do that for the sake of clarity. So now I know that is the far right end of my roof, of the base of my roof, and that's the far left end base of my roof. Now, <clears throat> that only gives me the bottom end, as I've said, but we still need to determine the tip of our roof. Now, to determine the tip of our roof, we can go about this several ways. I like to use a hybrid method um, where I am going to use the angle of my uh, roof base here, which is 30 degrees, and project it to that th uh, tip of my roof. And then I'm going to draw a projection line from that tip of the roof all the way to my um, picture plane. That will create for me a secondary anchor line, which will give me a new line that I can use for the height of the tip of my roof. So I could have used another method where I take the tip uh, the height of the tip of my roof on the front view all the way to the main anchor line. I could have used that method as well, 
but we will discuss that just now. So for now, I'm just going to show you if I use this hybrid method. I'm going to project that now and down uh, indefinite. It doesn't matter how far you want to take it down. And uh, I'm just going to take it to there. And then what I want to do is I want to take the height of that roof all the way to that secondary anchor line. And then from there, I can just project it all the way to my left vanishing point. Once I've done that, I know that that will be where my tip of the roof would be in the perspective answer. So now I just need to know where on that height is that point going to be for the tip of my roof. And that's why I'm now going to go to the tip of my roof on the top view and I'm going to project it to the standpoint. And once I have drawn it to the standpoint, I can again just shorten that line because I only need it to be projected up to the picture plane. Although, again, as I said before, must meet with their starting point if you were to project it all the way through. And then I'm going to draw a vertical line straight down that's going to intersect with the tip of my roof right over there. And I'm going to clean it up and make it neat so that it is a perfect connection. And then also plot the intersection there. So now I have determined the actual tip of my roof and I can give it a label. Let's grab any label, copy it. And we're going to say here on my top view, there's the tip of my roof. Just rename that to a capital T for tip. Okay, and now we can copy that and paste it and just go and label it here on my perspective. And we can also just label it here on my front view. And this could be a side view as well. Okay, in this particular case, this drawing, it would be the same whether it's a front view or a side view because it's a symmetrical shape. Okay, so I have the tip of my roof, so I've determined that. That was one way of determining the tip of the roof. Let me just show you another way. So I'm going to change the line color now, just uh, make it green for what it's worth. If I were again to take the tip of the roof and project all the way now to the anchor line. So now from the anchor line, I need to still project the tip of the roof to the left vanishing point. And then what we want to do is we want to follow uh, the line as it went through to the left vanishing point and we need to bring it back at some place now to our right vanishing point. So this is where we now need to determine where is the middle of that line because we know that if we were to project that line down that more or less there, that's not the exact point, we would have uh, the far left end of the roof. So what we want to do is we want to draw a line that's parallel here and project it to there. So I'm going to use the green still from the tip of the roof to there. So that gives me the middle point. And then I'm going to take that now all the way to the standpoint. Once I've reached that, I can just again, like with the previous examples, just shorten that projection line. And again, I can now go and project that straight down. And that will give me the intersection that I need there. So now I know if this line was projected towards the edge of that roof, just on the correct height, it would be there. But that is now the point here on the side of the roof. We still need to go now inward to the right to find the tip of the roof. And that's why I'm going to go now and project from that point towards the right vanishing point. That height slightly off. Let me redo it. It's very important to make sure that you project it accurately to the actual tip. Right to the center of that vanishing point. And now if you worked accurately, you would see that projection that I now take from the tip of the roof down to the SP will then in fact me perfectly there with my intersection with the previous method that I've done. So that is just two ways of showing you how to determine the tip of the roof. Okay, so now we want to just draw in solid all the lines of our roof. 
So now that we have confirmed the projection of our roof in the perspective, so that's why we want to just make sure that we draw those lines solid and we connect each of the corners of our roof. And here this part is very easy. So there we go. There we have the whole roof as you can see it from the top in perspective. Now what we want to do is we want to first save, of obviously, because uh, we don't want the program to crash. It wouldn't. But So what we want to do now is want to make sure that we get the actual uh, walls of our tower. Now what we would need to notice is that the roof has an overhang. So in other words, if we look at the top view, there's a distance from the edge of our roof to the outside edge of our wall. And that's the distance that we need to determine. Now there's many ways that you can do this, but I like to use the hybrid method for this as well. So parallel to the wall of the um, wall, of to the uh, slant of my wall, or the external wall, I'm going to draw another parallel line all the way to my right, and I'm going to change the line color to, let's say, um, yeah, cayenne, and we're going to project that line out to our picture plane. From there, we want to go and project it straight down so that we can get it all the way to the ground line because it's important to remember that if you project anything here, obviously of the base of your design towards the picture plane, you will take that down all the way to your ground line as well. Okay, for the roof, we didn't have to do that because obviously the roof was um, uh, higher up, lifted off the ground, but the actual wall will uh, make contact with the ground. So now we know we've projected that corner of our wall, and we can use the parachute method as well uh, for this exercise, but that's not necessary. We can use this hybrid method. So what I'm going to do is project from that uh, depth uh, line on the ground line towards the left vanishing point, and now I have a construction that will give me the position of the corner of my wall. So I want to get this corner of my wall, and I know it's going to be somewhere on this projection. Now I just need to determine or pinpoint the exact position for that. And the way that I need to go about it is to go to that corner and project it once again to our standpoint. So that's what I'm going to do there. And as before, I can erase or shorten that line so that it stops there at the picture plane and from there on the picture plane project it straight down and that will then give me the position of the corner of the base of my wall right there on my uh, perspective drawing. Let me just use the tool and there we go. And I'm going to just plot dot there so that you can clearly see there's the actual corner, bottom right hand corner, which is this corner here of my external wall. So once I have that point, all the rest becomes very easy. So from that point, I just need to now go and project the base of that wall all the way to the right vanishing point. And once I've done that, I know that I can just go now to this right hand corner, the same as we did with the roof, remember to get the furthest extent of the roof disappearing to the right. We want to do the same with the wall. So from the far right hand corner of our wall, go take that to the standpoint because the standpoint, as we've mentioned, gives us the depth perspective. And that's why we want to use that, shorten it to the picture plane, bring that line straight down from the picture plane all the way so that it intersects with that baseline that we have projected. Shorten it and let's make it a neat drawing. And then we plot that point just for the sake of this tutorial. Now we have the inside corner here. We've got the far right hand corner there and all we need is the left hand corner over here. And because we now already know that it is going to be on this height here, so we just have to go now and take that left hand corner and project that to the standing point to get the depth perspective or perception, whichever you'd like to call it, and then shorten that to the picture plane. 
Please note, I always take it to the SP that is, and pinpoint to the SP that is very important. And then from there, I'm going to go and project it straight down through the baseline of my wall. And tidy up the line work and plot the point for the sake of the tutorial. And now I have the corners on the base of my wall. And all that I need to do now is just connect with solid lines each of those corners with one another. And in perspective, we hardly ever show hidden details. So we are not going to show where the wall is meeting now on the inside behind the uh, overhang of my roof. So we just want to finish these solid lines because they are outlines and outlines are always solid. And on CAT, I always use my solid lines as 0.5. And there we have the final conclusion of our tower with the pitch roof, the overhang and the wall of our tower completed. Thank you for watching.